Good morning. It's nine o'clock. Everybody over the, what would we call it? Like the holiday <clears throat> sadness or whatever. Holdrums. Hold, is it Holdrums? Is that the word I'm thinking about? The holiday Holdrums. Is that a word? Holdrums? Trace, is that a word? Holdrums? It is. It's doldrums. Doldrums. Not holdrums. Doldrums. <laughs> <clears throat> I was close. One letter off. Right. The holiday doldrums. <laughs> Good morning. It is a cloudy day. I I uh, saw the oh I follow that guy on Facebook, Front Range Denver and Front Range Weather or something like that. I really like him a lot better than the TV guys. So, which I don't watch any a uh, lot of TV like that anyway. But um, he was saying maybe we're supposed are we supposed to get snow this afternoon possibly. Oh, thank you, Randy. Doldrums, yes. <laughs> I need you guys all to help me out here <clears throat> every once in a while. Give me those words. All right. All right, well, <clears throat> I know it's not good to say I told you so, but I told you so, didn't I? I said that uh, the list of the perverts was going to come out, which did you see Slick Willie was on there over 50 times. Uh, I mean, that, that man, <clears throat> when, when he got elected, um, possibly the most immoral man that's ever been in that office. I mean, I don't know the hearts of anyone else, but uh, that man was, he, he is um, just a wicked man and Wicked family, <clears throat> but he was mentioned in Epstein's uh, journal uh, over 50 times. Um, just a pervert, uh, definitely a pedophile. Uh, needs to be in prison. Um, but, you know, I said that list was coming out, right? You, you had the Duke of, I don't know, the Duke of Earl, or I don't know where he's from, but Prince Andrew, uh, I think is his name, found out he was on there, uh, was pervert too, and uh, haven't seen the whole list. I don't know if they're letting it out yet, um, totally, but I'm telling you, so I said that list was coming out, right? Wednesday night. So guess what? We have a school shooting in Dallas County, Iowa today. Uh, uh, sorry, not a coincidence. Um, they doing everything they can. They'll sacrifice our kids all day long. And you think, no, there's no one that wicked to, that would do that. Look, they, they kill, that they will kill innocent babies just out of the convenience for the mom. So yes, absolutely. There are the wicked people out there that will do this to uh, protect themselves and, uh, and gain more money. So um, be careful. I'm, I say all of that to tell you we need to be careful and walk carefully in this day and age. And uh, uh, what is it that uh, Jesus says that we should um, <clears throat> be as wise as serpents, harmless as doves, right? And I don't think that it's a good idea to be gullible in this wicked day and uh, the devil is definitely after us in different uh, different ways. So let's walk closely to God, right? Mandy uh, Brown, I see you're on here. Look, we, we pray for you. Uh, pray that God will do something special to give you some healing in your body. And uh, pray that you get some, some uh, uh, information today that will truly be helpful to you. And uh, we will uh, pray for you, Mandy. And we will also... Um, Continue to pray for little JP. Uh, they they just need God to do something there. This little guy, they said he was doing better today. His oxygen level is up. Tom did. And uh, there's some positive signs today, but uh, we just really need God's hand on this little boy. And um, 
and with that too, I, I will not be on here uh, Monday. Um, you, pray for me if you would. Uh, you know, I asked this in our church before and uh, talked about this. Who pastors the pastor, you know, when they're going through issues? And, well, they just, uh, Tom is a good friend. Went to school with Tom 30 years ago. Uh, he's been a faithful man to, to preach the word of God. And, and so I am going to fly out on Saturday and uh, fly into... Uh, uh, Birmingham, which is next door to Carrot and Matt. I'm, not gonna get, I'm just going to get to say hi to them. But uh, flying into Birmingham on Saturday, uh, driving down to, to Tom's place about an hour and a half, uh, two hours away, and uh, go to the visitation uh, Saturday evening. And then I'm preaching for him at his church on Sunday. He, uh, I believe... Uh, don't hold me this, but I believe he might be preaching the sermon for uh, his daughter-in-law that afternoon, Sunday afternoon. And I'm telling you, right now, the last thing he needs to do is is be in that pulpit. He just needs to be with his family. And uh, so <clears throat> uh, I have the ability to do that with the, the crew in our church that we have. Thane and, and uh, Wes are very capable. We have uh, Frank Maeda, who'll be here, who's a seasoned missionary in uh, Italy. Uh, you don't want to miss that. And so Teresa's going to stay home, and the Maedas are staying with us. And so, but I will not be here this weekend. So I would ask that you pray for me and pray they'll have the right words to say for their church. They're all hurting right now. And uh, it, it uh, you know, I just thought maybe this is one way that that uh, I can help Tom and Don and Nathan and uh, and Haley's uh, mom and dad, uh, that I can help them out a little bit here and uh, <clears throat> just uh, take off a little bit of pressure. It's not much, but maybe it'll help a little bit. So anyway, so uh, you pray for that if you would. I hate to fly, but in this situation, don't have much choice. And so we are uh, going to, to go and try to help them out. So pray for safety. I'll be home Monday, flying out Saturday, coming home Monday. So it'll be a crazy trip. But uh, I will at least, I mean, the airport is only 20 minutes from, from Kareth and Matt. So on my way to Tom and Don's and then on my way back to the airport, I get to stop and say hi to those guys and, and uh, say hi to Mr. James. So, <clears throat> but... What ask you pray for that? And uh, anyway, so pray for our country, uh, you know, with this. I don't know what's going on with this shooting. And it's in Dallas County, Iowa. Uh, so <clears throat> don't Dexter High School or something like that. I saw, I don't know what, what all is happening there right now, but it is definitely uh, just a wicked day. And, and whether it's the people or whether it's the devil, Obviously, the devil is involved in this, but uh, it's just, it, you, we've just gotten used to this, where uh, when you see something that, that is going to interfere with the wicked desires of, of some of these politicians or bureaucrats or whoever, then there are all kinds of these wicked things that go on, and it just shows you the how, how willing they are to destroy other people to... Uh, uh, keep them out of the limelight. And so, <clears throat> anyway, let me read Psalm 4, okay? <clears throat> we'll get into this. And uh, it, it's such a psalm of peace. <clears throat> and that's what we need, right? <clears throat> so David writes, he says, Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Remember, I, I mentioned this before. When he, when he says... The idea that thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Think about what distress is. Distress is a squeezing, right? And and you feel like you're you're under pressure. You're having a hard time making a decision. You're, you know, struggling. Uh, feel like maybe you're drowning. Uh, the, those are all the the signs of distress, right? Well, to be enlarged means that he gives you breathing room, and so he is allowing you to get out of that tight space and put you into a larger room where where you have room, right? And, and so he gives us, uh, puts us into an enlarged place, right? And 
And so, and have mercy upon me and hear my prayers. And, O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing, you know, lying and cheating? And, uh, and, and how long, Lord, are, are these people going to continue to do these things? But uh, here's, here's what he tells us. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. You know, don't don't fall prey to the the language of the unsaved. Don't don't fall prey and have the same mentality and attitude as the unsaved world. Don't don't go out acting like the world. Don't don't go looking like the world. And whether it's it's with a mentality or with an attitude or or even even the way we dress and and act and treat others, everything ought to be different than than what these people are and. And here, know that the Lord has set him uh, set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. So know that when, when we are walking righteously, and, and righteously means that we're allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us and give us information that we need to, to live in a way that is biblical and doing what God tells us that we ought to be doing, right? And so let's do that and stand in awe. And, and we should, we ought to stand in awe of who God is, how good he is and uses, choose to use us. I mean, what, what do we have to offer, you know, and, and, and stand in awe of his mercy, his long suffering, his grace, his mercy. I mean, you, you think about this world and the way it is. And most of us, I'm, I'm telling you, if we had the ability, we'd have scorched a lot of these people by now. But God doesn't. And you think, why? Why, God, do you let this go on? Because he is full of mercy and he's full of long suffering, and he, and he loves those people and wants them to turn away from their wicked ways and trust him as their savior. I mean, that, that is it. That's why God does what he's doing. And, and he doesn't want anyone to perish. And, and so... Uh, we should stand in all of that and sin not. Stop living like the world. You know, let's live for God, right? Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. You know, when, when we go to bed at night, start thinking about the good things of God that make us stand in awe of him. Think about the, the control that God has over things. And and make sure that he has control over over our thoughts. And so that when we go to bed at night, we're not going to bed with, with thoughts of hatred and, and anxiety and anger. But really, we, we are going to bed at night, communing with our hearts with God and, and giving him those things and praising him for who he is. It, it'll make a difference in your uh, even in your sleep habits, I'm sure. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. I mean... Uh, if you're unsaved, you need to trust Christ as your Savior. If you know Christ as your Savior, then put your trust in him that you know that he's got things under control. And there be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. More than in the time that their corn and their wine increased, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety." Well, isn't that good? So I mentioned this a, a while ago, but I read another article. Uh, oh, um, oh, Zuckerberg, you know, the founder of, of uh, Facebook, uh, has bought land in, in uh, uh, Hawaii, and they say he's building some kind of a huge underground bunker that will house like 30 people and it's going to have medical care and, you know, blasting doors and you know, and, and, uh, can, can I tell you something? Can I, can I tell you something? We can, we can live in peace and, and we can, we can be, we can truly be confident in knowing that we are completely safe in God's hands and only what God allows will God allow in our lives. And, and, and he'll do that for our betterment. Now, we might think it really stinks, and there are some bad things in this hard world that we deal with, right? And we have friends that are dealing with those things right now, and and we, we pray for them. But this is as bad as it gets for us here on earth, but it's going to get a whole lot worse for Mr. Zuckerberg. 
You know, it tells us that there's going to come a time where he can go, and, and it says that, that they will hide in caves, right? Well, they could easily be these little bunkers that they have. But you know what they'll do? They'll go in there and they will beg God to kill them, and God will not. They will suffer a wicked, horrible judgment because of their wickedness in their own hearts and their lives, in their rejection of Jesus, and, and in the wicked lifestyle that they have lived because of their their rejection of Jesus, and they will pay a severe price for that. And he can build all the bunkers that he wants to, but he can't hide from the hand of God. And so we can't either. And so you know what we do? We live for God. We we just lay it all out there. We we trust him. And and if the day comes where where there is a drought in the land and, and there is a famine going on and uh, people have nothing to eat. You, you know what? We give praise to God for our daily bread, right? We trust God. We we don't have to be hoarding everything and hiding everything and stashing everything. We just live day by day by God's provision. And he does that. And he'll take care of us. And, and if we die, we die. You know, some of us, it probably wouldn't hurt to go on a 30-day fast. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> but uh, you know the Psalm four, what a what a powerful psalm it is, and it, it truly is a psalm of peace, isn't it? You know, in in our we we uh, I know, isn't that interesting, Joel? I mean, why would I, I mean? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we 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 want to think, you know, the the world wants us to think that people like Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and Bezos and these guys are some brilliant people and they have lost all common sense that why in the world would you you would you be digging a big hole on an island <laughs> uh, yep and all God has to do oh let's just throw a little water up there we'll take care of that one real quick won't we so it just makes it easy we got polis here in our in our state you know, it tells us in Revelation that the wild animals will be killing people. Well, he's just making it easier. Why don't we just go ahead and, I don't know, go ahead and release about 3,000 wolves, you know, and let's not kill any of these mountain lions. Let's just make it easy for for God here. And, and uh, <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. And this is what it says in Proverbs 1. I read this today, too, verses 20 through 23. And... I don't know. Some people think I'm crazy for this, and and maybe so. But I I can I, I replace wisdom, and and this is what it says: wisdom crieth without. Okay, uh, all the proverbs is talking about wisdom. Now, one thing that I do, and be careful, I guess, but this is what I do for me. It helps me to understand wisdom somewhat. Is I I put the the man Jesus in the place of wisdom. And it just helps me because Jesus is wisdom. I mean, his words are wisdom. I mean, he, he taught everything about how to be wise in your reactions, your actions, the way you treat others, the way you pray, the way you walk with God, the all of those things. And and so it, 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 just, uh, it just reminds me that uh, wisdom that he's talking about are the very words of God and and. Uh, we we learn wisdom by spending time in his word. But it says, wisdom crieth without. It's standing outside and it's saying, hello, hello, hey, listen to me, listen to me, right? This is wisdom. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of the concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her words saying, how long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long are you going to have your minds open to all the trash that the devil wants to fill your mind with? How long are you going to do that? How long are you going to let the world be the one that dictates to you what you think and how you think and try to control you? Look, our, our government is doing everything they can to control us. And, and it's not just, it's Satan himself. I don't know if you saw this or not too. The sports betting has gotten ridiculous. And... 
I, I had no idea. You, you can use credit cards for sports betting. I, I, I had no idea. So, and, and guess who, they've done a study now and, and guess who it is that they're, that they, all the advertising is focused at. Uh, those who are men usually, uh, um, it is uh, 18 to 22 years old. <laughs> They're getting these young men, 18 to 22 years old, hooked on gambling. I mean, the, 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 and, and it's as, it's as wicked an addiction as, as alcohol, as drugs, as uh, pornography, any of that. And, and now, you know, and, and we have these people running for president that are all for this. Chris Christie is all about it, you know, and, and some of these other perverts that are up there too. And, and uh, 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 here we, we see that the simple ones, well, you love simplicity. It just means being open-minded to everything out there. You know, the only thing that we ought to be open-minded to is what does this say? What does the word say? What, what is it that God is saying about things? And be careful what we are listening to. And, and so wisdom is crying out, hey, how long are you going to be listening to these things? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Oh, don't tell us this about this Jesus. Don't tell us that we can't uh, gamble. Don't tell us that alcohol is wicked. We can do this. It's an adult beverage. And we have the right to drink it whenever we want. And don't tell us that it's wrong. And, and, and don't tell us about the inhibitions that it brings about. I just read about Noah, who, who uncovered himself in his drunkenness and, and brings such a reproach upon himself and upon his own children. And don't, don't you know, oh, we don't want to hear any of that. We don't want to hear about the drugs and the people that have lost their, their families. We don't want to hear about the gambling and those that have lost their homes and ran themselves into a, a horrible debt because of that. And, and then he says in verse 23, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we need to, we need to, and you turn to the wisdom, turn to Jesus, right? And, and Jesus gives us the wisdom and, and, the, and the, the right decisions that we need to make. And, and uh, this world is screaming at us trying to, uh, I'm telling you, you talk about distractions, Jan, you, you said it, you know, trying to distract from the things that, that really could destroy their lives. And so they're willing to destroy other people's lives. These little middle school kids, yeah, they're willing to do that. And so... Uh, we get this shooting going on, and, and now the press has something to run with so that they can ignore the Epstein files and not report anything on that and just bury that because we need to have more gun control and more mind control and, and la, 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 la. And, and, and I'm telling you that Satan is doing that all day long to those who are believers and trying to keep them distracted and trying to keep their minds on other things and keep them addicted to other things so they can't serve God. They can't think about God. All they can think about are their addictions that they have. And, and wisdom is crying out all day, every day. And he wants to use us to tell others about Jesus. And uh, I, I'm telling you, don't listen to these characters that are out there. Bill Gates flying around on Pervert Express and... and you know, and, and I'll end with this too, Mr. Bill Gates. You're telling us that there needs to be population control. You and Fauci and some of those other um, demonic characters that think that you can run the world and and you introduce COVID. And yeah, and I do believe that. I think you were all in bed with the Chinese and thinking this is a good way to, to control the population. Well, this is what God says, and this is a command that that, that uh, he, he gives to uh, all of us in Genesis 9 and verse 7. This is what God tells Noah. And you be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And John Kerry comes out a couple of weeks ago with their 
little hoo-ha thing up there, you know, with the global warming and says that there is no way that this world can sustain the population that we have. And Bill Gates saying the same thing. And what does God say? God says multiply. And, you know, all of this is just anti-God. So you know what I say? Let's listen to God. We don't need to listen to Bill Gates. Bill Gates can go hide in his uh, volcanic uh, uh, hideout with with uh, Zuckerberg and whoever else Bezos wants to be, and they can stand at the door of that and throw all their money out the door and say, here, God, take all of this. We'll pay for our way for you to have mercy. And God say, I don't need any of that trash. I don't need that. All I wanted was your heart. And I wanted you to trust me and you choose not to. And so, but for those little peasants that have gone out and trusted Christ and lived for God and told others about Jesus, and and maybe you didn't uh, have the influence on people like Zuckerberg did, but you had influence on those around you and you get to take a whole handful of people with you to heaven. Oh, I'm telling you, the rewards will be great. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's, uh, some of the thoughts. I kind of ran it a little more than I probably should have today. It just, you know, these people that want to put themselves up as God, uh, hiding themselves in a cave. That's, that's what they've gotten to. You know, they think that they're all powerful and really they're just some petulant little child who's scared to death, digging a big hole, losing their mind, digging it in a volcanic island. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thinking that they're going to hide from God. <laughs> uh, you know what? He has set us apart to serve him. So let's serve him, right? Let's just look to him and uh, let's go out. Let's have a great day today, guys. Uh, just, you know, walk with knowing you have the protection of God praying for God to do a miracle in Joe's life, in in um, Bill Harding's and Mandy's life, in little JP's life, that, that God will take the, the life of Haley Jordan. And uh, this weekend, there will be many that come to trust Christ as their Savior, that it, it'll just be a, a glorious day where God can use that for healing in the lives of so many people. So, God bless you guys. Let's go out. Let's have a great Thursday. And Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, we will be back on here tomorrow.